Alright, welcome back to Burnout Part 2. Um, in the last lecture, I just went really quickly about some uh, introductory themes of the burnout, and I'm going to continue on talking about burnout. Um, I just wanted to further clarify some of the things that I might not have made too clear. Uh, the first thing was the books that I, uh, that I suggested, excuse me, the books that I suggested, um, they don't really have much to do with worship leading, but they are very valuable resources as far as helping you get over things, helping you to help others get over things, uh, helping you to understand things, etc. Um, the Jeff Dio, I, I suggested that you watch him as videos, and uh, if you watched the last video, Burnout Part 1, I posted some links on the video as far as um, uh, some, of the, some of the videos. Um, he was a singer, and uh, and, and kind of like a it was a Christian is a Christian band. Um, uh, I can't think of the name now, but then when that Christian band broke up, he be, he kind of went solo and did this kind of like a, a worship CDs, um, kind of more progressive uh, worship. Uh, it wasn't your typical you know piano and acoustic guitar. It had you know electric guitars and stuff like that. Um, anyways, uh, he he was having some throat problems. So he had to stop singing, and he went on to teach at a, at a Christian college. Uh, a great guy, uh, yeah, just a great guy. I've dealt with him many times, and he's just a he's just a fantastic guy. Uh, I would strongly suggest uh, uh, watching his his videos, and if you find any material he's written, I would highly suggest picking it up, seeing what he has to say. Um, the counseling book that I that I suggested that was more to not only help you to get over your problems, but also to help you be able to help others. I will touch on this later in in a later video. But uh, and the main part of being a worship leader is being a worship pastor. It's not so much a position of pastoring in the church, but as the worship leader, it's your job to kind of pastor the people during your time of worship. Uh, the songs that you sing, it's your job to make sure that they're theologically correct. Uh, you know, uh, w what you say to them, you have to make sure you're singing with the right attitude, you're saying the right things. Um, uh, really, uh, the, the people in your band, you have to make sure that uh, if they need help, they're getting it. You're always open for them to be able to get in contact with. Uh, you know, j being, uh, being a worship leader is more than just stage performance. It's way more than that. It involves hours of prep times. It involves practice. It involves being open at any time to talk. It involves you know making sure that you're you're spiritually walking correctly, uh, so on and so forth. And then the next thing I wanted to mention that I really didn't touch that far on was um, uh, I said uh, I suggest that uh, you seek help. Uh, both in and out of the church. And why I would suggest not just going to a pastor is because a pastor is a spiritual leader. He is the head of the flock. He does not know everything concerning counseling, psychology, etc. He knows spiritual matters. Uh, he is trained for spiritual matters. Uh, some pastors have advanced training, in which case they know about church finances and, and media and stuff like that. Which is good, but and to a very limited degree, even trained pastors, not just people who you know took a few classes. I'm talking about actual training, going, getting a degree in it. Um, they only cover very small counseling classes. Usually, they have like one uh, broad psychology class, one or two pretty broad counseling classes. Nothing really to be a licensed counselor. So when you're seeking counseling with a pastor, you have to be aware of that, and as a, either a pastor or a worship leader, you have to also be aware that you are not going to be able to be the final authority as far as that. For instance, some things are spiritual and some things are physical. You know, um, is it possible that cancer could be uh, a sign of um, sin in your life? Well, yeah, I, I suppose it's possible, but is it always likely? Well, no. For the most part, we kind of figure that if you have cancer, it's because a cell is, you know, unhealthy and then it spreads and stuff like that, well, you know, the same basic idea. Not all the time when someone is having, let's say, panic attacks, is it due to sin in their life. Sometimes people have chemical imbalances in their brain or whatever, in which case God could heal it. 
God could still heal it. I'm not saying that God's unable in some circumstances. Regardless of whether it's physical or spiritual, God will still be able to heal. But whether he does or not is something else. Okay. Um, with that being said, the pastor should be seen as strictly a spiritual leader. Now, what I suggest is that counseling is done with the pastor before it's escalated to a counselor or psychiatrist, in which case I suggest my opinion that the pastor then decides whether this is something that needs a counselor or whether it's not. Some bigger churches uh, will actually hire out to counselors, which I'm fine with. I actually kind of agree with that. But uh, smaller churches, like for instance the one that I'm currently uh, a worship leader at, it's they don't have the money or the resources to hire a counselor, you know. Uh, and for that, I would suggest the pastor doing the best job they can, but knowing where the limitations are. And that's exactly what I would like. That's I just kind of helping you figure out what I meant in the last video. Um, now going back to continuing on with burnout, uh, fighting burnout. Um, don't do solo ministry. Don't do it. Because often what can happen is it can lead to kind of nitpicking. You know, either this has to be done my way, or not at all. And if you watch my video on attitudes, I talk more in-depthly about that, so I don't really want to go into that right now. But uh, it's just important that you understand um, uh, what well, really your limitations, but going going on when when you're in burnout, try to do similar things that you do when you were trying to resist burnout. Um, you know, uh, take breaks if you need them. Take breaks. You know, um, if if you feel overworked and you just feel like you hate it, just take try to take some time off. See if you can get someone to cover for you. You know, go on a vacation, step down for a little bit if you want. But one thing that I do not encourage is do not get completely separated. Do not become isolated. Burnout is a very serious problem that you might need to go see, see counseling or help on. But with that being said, can, burnout can often push you to the other extreme of not being involved in anything. And you can't let that happen. You have to stay committed to God, to your church to yourself, to your family, you have to stay committed, stay faithful. Um, uh, I would suggest long periods of time in prayer. You might want to consider fasting, uh, worshiping outside of church, just finding a time to just be alone with God is a devo good devotional time, read your Bible often, um, and realize that you can do this. You know, like, it often times can see that you, it's not worth it, or that it's not working out, but trust me, it will, and it is. Um, what, when, when you're in this, uh, note, note, note a few things. One, what made you start this ministry? What was so important that you started in the first place? And two, where do you want to be in five years? Do you want to be just sulking in your room, you know? Realize that in ministry, bad things are going to happen. Excuse me. I'm sorry. In ministry... There's going to be times when you feel drained. In ministry, there's going to be times when people stab you in the back. In ministry, there's going to be times when people spread rumors about you. It's happened to me, you know. But what you have to do is you have to keep getting up. You have to keep trying. Otherwise, this thing will just own you. It'll just completely wipe out your life. And it can lead to other more more, more serious issues. Um, uh, not just uh, physical, but also spiritual. And, uh, and then afterwards, when you, if you if you get over burnout, when you get over burnout, um, do the best you can to just stay clear of that. If you start feeling those feeling those feelings coming again, once again with the accountability group, a lot of the things that I said to do before you get caught into burnout also apply for when you're in it and when you're after it. Um, but really, when you're in it, make sure that limit yourself. That's the main thing. Limit yourself. Okay, I can do without doing this, this, and this. I can't. I can do with doing this, this, and this. I might not enjoy it, but I'm going to do it anyways because I'm staying committed. And uh, eventually, the feelings will come back. You can't let your feelings, you know, go crazy with you. If you've been married, I am. 
Um, you know that sometimes you are just crazy in love with your wife, and some, sometimes you're like, oh, I wish I wasn't married. It's just part of life. You're not always going to feel like doing something. But the trick is to stay committed to something even when you don't feel like doing it. But with that being said, burnout is a very, very harmful thing. And if not dealt with properly, um, it can have really negative effects. Um, with that being said, I want to encourage you, if you're in burnout, I would encourage you to seek help with your pastor. Let your family know. See if they can do anything to help you. Find resources. Go see a counselor. Uh, heck, Google search about burnout. Just whatever it is, make sure that you do everything in your power to get over it. Um, some things like panic attacks, burnout, uh, pride, these things, if not dealt with, can just weigh us down and just totally wipe us out. And uh, I want to see your ministry succeed. I know you want to see your ministry succeed. So I just encourage you to uh, uh, do whatever it takes to take care of burnout. Um, I know this is kind of like a drive-by shooting of burnout. Trust me, if, you've, if you're involved in counseling, you know how extensive these topics can be. Uh, and really how much there are and there is to it and how complicated they can be. But really what I'm trying to do is just kind of give you a basic overcap and let you know where to go. Uh, from here. This is not meant to be all-inclusive, and like I say, this is only a segment of the book. This is just the main points of the book. So, really, if you want more, you can read it on the book. You can read articles on world on our blog, which is, the link is, should be down below. Uh, you know, well, with all the, with all the things that I've said, hopefully it'll help you to, uh, to get past this and to grow from this. Next time we're going to be talking about... Um, uh, bitterness and adultery. It'll probably be in the same same lecture. Um, and then after that, we have uh, one or two more about just general attitudes. And then from there, we'll branch off to uh, more serious, or not more serious, but more uh, publicly enjoyed topics, like, for instance, stage presentation, selecting uh, sets, uh, good responses from your teammates, etc., etc., etc. Were more things that you're actually looking for when you typed in how to lead worship. Um, so I hope that this helps you, and uh, I do apologize for you know uh, being so quick, but I just wanted to, like I say, this isn't supposed to be all inclusive. It's just supposed to help you get on your feet. Um, well, hey, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.